Hi guys, it is me, the Onyx 2D guy. Um, I'm recording a tutorial for 600 subscribers. Thank you, by the way. Um, hopefully this works because I tried to record it and then it wasn't recording any of the menus. So, um, yeah. So what you want to do first is press new composition, and you can copy all my settings right here. I have it 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS, and duration 15 seconds. So we're just going to call this whatever you want, but I'm going to call it tutorial. Uh, yeah. So now we have to find a song. So I have one already. It's going to be this one. So I'm going to drag it in here. Okay, now you want to go into the drop-down menu. Go to audio, waveform. And then you just drag it until you get to the drop. Uh pretty sure the drop is right here yeah okay so now we go to four seconds and we can drag this back to make sure the first beat of the drop is where we want it to be and then you click this little stopwatch button and that makes a keyframe so you go back here and you make this keyframe negative 60 so then it fades in <laughs> Now I'm going to listen and see where it should end. It's going to end right here. So now I'm going to press this diamond button right here and that will make a keyframe. So it won't like change the value from here to here. And then I'm going to go to the end and make this also negative 60. So then it fades in and then it fades out. Okay, so now what you want to do is make sure you still have the song selected and go to every beat and press the asterisk key on your keyboard um, on the numpad part of it. And then let's just listen. And then you do want to mark a little bit after this so that when you're time remapping the background, it doesn't get messed up. You can just put it in random places here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can close out this. But now we want to go up to composition, new composition, and call this one text. Uh, so I'm going to find a font real quick. I'm just going to type... My god, I'm so bad at typing. Okay, there we go. Uh, if you have motion 2, you can do this. But if you don't, you can press Control alt and then double-click the pan behind tool. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to find a font real quick. Okay, so the font I'm using is Reality Check 2 Demo. Um, I've actually never used this font before, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so I am using plugins in this. So if you want one without plugins, then go to Mute Effects. Um, but if you do want plugins, then watch this because this will teach you how to use plugins ish. <laughs> that was a stretch. Okay, so. What you want to do is right click, go to layer, well this is how I make my text, but right click, go to layer styles, and then inner shadow, and make it the angle 270, so then you have that, um, and then right click, go to layer styles again, and do stroke, I'm going to make it purple because that is my favorite color. Um, and just make the stroke so it's like that, and then you can duplicate it, make it a darker color, make it thick, and then close that, and then you can select these both and pre-compose. So right now we have this, 
So I'm going to put echo space on it. And how to use echo space? Tutorial time. Okay, so go into setup, press repeat. And it's going to take a second because this is, in fact, Adobe After Effects 2019. Um, then go into Repeater and make the scale negative 1 and make the Y offset 3. So right now we have this. Um, what you want to do is click this one and then hold down Control and Shift and click the bottom one. And then right click, pre-compose, doesn't matter what you call it. Um, now we're going to put warp on it, so drag warp on there, make the bend 0 and the vertical distortion 20 is what I usually do. Looks pretty epic. Um, and now we're going to add a stroke again, so go in here, stroke, and make it white. And you can make it any size, but I usually make mine 5. Um, yeah, so that's how you make epic text. Then go over here and drag it into your main composition. So first thing, we're going to add a drop shadow. And put it right here. Make the direction 180, the distance probably about 14, and then turn up the softness to like 40. So then it looks like that, and it's epic. Um, I can turn that off. So, um, I am going to be leaving my preset for this in the description. It's just an expression, but I am not going to go find it. Actually, I think I have it on my computer. Um, Blonde's text, here it is. Okay, yeah, I'll leave this into the description. And you can just... So copy it and then hit yeah and then go into here and press S and then hold control and press that that's not the button. Uh hold alt yeah, hold alt and press the stopwatch button and then this is gonna come up and then you're gonna press control V and that's gonna copy the expression into there. So now what you can do is just drag the scale into here and you can just name it scale bounce or whatever you want to. But I already have a preset for that, so I'm not going to. So now, to make it bouncy, I don't usually like make it fade in and then bounce. Because um, I do different thing. So, you're going to press this, and then go one frame away. Make it 80. And then go the next frame, and make it 100. So then it's going to go bouncy, like this. Yeah. Um... We can do rotation now, so click this, press R, and then it'll bring up the rotation menu. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to listen to it real quick. I want the rotation to be here, so I'm going to go back here, like right there, and I'm going to press this button, and then I'm going to go a little bit far away, like to here, and make that one, and then you select them and press F9, and then go into the graph editor right here. Uh, this is how you do it with value graph, I'll show you how to do it with speed graph in a second. So you want to just drag this out, then this one right there. So that it's like that, and then oh, that's not in the right spot. I want to drag this out a little more, so it's like that. And now you can see it rotates on the beat. Uh, now here I'll show you how to do it with speed graph. Uh, click this and then go to speed graph. I think speed graph is easier. Just, this is just my personal opinion. But I also use value graph a lot too. So basically with speed graph you want to make sure the highest point 
is on where you want the most rotation to be. So like it's gonna look like this. And this is what that looks like in value graph. So let's say you make the exact same thing in two different graphs. Uh, so now we have a bouncy bouncy. And we have a rotation. And I'm going to go ahead and do some more text animations real quick. To make it do like this, like kind of 3D rotations, you want to click this button right there. And X rotation is to make it go that way, and Y rotation is to make it go this way. So, yeah. Okay, so right now the text animations look like this. Okay, so now we're going to move on to doing the background. So go up here, composition, new composition, and call this BG. Um, let's see, I guess we can make a circle burst background. So hit control Y, and that'll make a new solid. It doesn't matter what color it is, because we're just going to add a gradient ramp. That's not how you spell ramp. Uh, and then drag that on there. So it's going to look like this, and we're going to hit swap colors. So now it's like this, because you are... In intros, you want the darker color on the bottom and the lighter color on the top, so it makes a nice gradient. Um, we'll just make this dark purple. So now it's like this. Um, and then right click, new shape layer, add ellipse, and that'll make a circle. I don't know how other people do it. They probably like go up here, ellipse tool, and then go like that. But I don't like to do that. So, um, add a stroke. Let me just make it bigger so you can see how it's actually gonna look. I usually make mine probably about right there. Um, and so yeah, we're gonna animate it now. At the beginning, you want to make it zero, and then at like one and a half seconds. Just drag it until it goes off of the screen. So that's like this. Uh, now I'm going to duplicate it and drag it back here. I'm going to add a gradient ramp to this. Can make it like a grayish color. That looks nice. And then duplicate this one. Bring it back like the same amount right there. Um, and then change this one to maybe like a light purple pinkish color. And then we can duplicate this one again. Drag it above and then go back here. Yeah, right there. And then we can add Venetian blind or however you say it. Uh, make the transition completion 50, the direction 90, and make this also 50. That's what I usually do. Uh, so yeah, and then you can just pre-compose these. So right now it looks like this. Now we're going to add echo because it's going to duplicate them by itself. We don't have to. So then just drag the echo time back until you get to what looks like is the same distance away. That's, I believe, the same distance away. So now we can watch it. Yep. We'll put this in quarter. Um, and then make it like... Yeah, 10 is good for this one. Maybe 8. Yeah, 8 is good for this one. Uh, just make it so that it only goes to the end of the composition because if you make it like 60 or something, then that is going to be way too much and it's going to lag your computer. <sighs> Stretch time.
So yeah, now we have this simple background. Uh, we can drag this on here for now. So yeah, that's what that looks like right now. Uh, now we're gonna hide the text and do some time remapping on the background. Oh yeah! Okay, so now we can right click, go to time, enable time remapping. Um, and the reason I did the markers on the song is because you can press J and K to go back and forth on it. So yeah, just click this button at every frame. Not every frame, every keyframe. Uh, and then select them all by clicking here and then dragging out. And then hit F9 and go into the graph editor. And make sure you are on value graph for this because you cannot do time remap on speed graph. Uh, so just click this little magnifying glass so it's not blue anymore, and then click this button, and then hold control and zoom in on the first one, and alt and zoom in on the first one. I'm just going to pull it so it's like that. It's going to look like this, hopefully. <laughs> So now we have time remap, and you can turn on the text again. Yeah, that's what that looks like. Now we're going to make the splines. Uh, these, this is probably my least favorite part of making intros, but it's worth it. Okay, so you want to copy the song from here and into here too. Because you want to make the splines like on every beat. So I'm going to go into this and turn on proportional grid. I can just zoom in a lot. Okay, so now what you want to do is click the pen tool and make this white. Um, I'll do 60 this time. Okay, so zoom in all the way onto the f middle and then do fit and then we can zoom in to like over here and click there. And then uh, to make get it back to normal, just click fit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and add trim paths. And then go right here. And make sure it's on like the markers. And make the N0. Click both of these. And then go to the next one. And go like that. And then just make it so that it's like probably about that much. And then drag this back. Select these both. Hit F9. And I prefer to go into speed graph for this and then just drag it back. So that's like this. Now we're going to animate the stroke on it. So we're going to go like here, the stroke width, and then go over here and make this zero. So what you do to get like all of the different ones is you close this out. Just click off of it, and then click Add Repeater, and then make 10 copies, go into the Transform menu, make the Position 0, and the Rotation 36. So now we have a bunch of these, and they're pretty big. Um, so now what you do, you duplicate this, hit R, and rotate it 90 degrees. And then change the stroke color to whatever color your intro you're making is. So now we have epic spline. So now you can pre-compose these, call it like spline 1 or something. And then go to the beat that it starts on and hit control shift D. And then delete that one. And then go to wherever the spline ends. And do it again, control shift D, and delete that one. 
Now we're gonna make another one for this beat. Uh, what we can do is just copy this one, go into here and paste. Uh, hide this one. I'm gonna make like a curvy one, so you're gonna add a zigzag. Uh, make the size like that big. Um, smooth, and then turn the ridges way down and make that big. So that's gonna look like this. That's not what I wanted. Okay, what you're gonna have to do so it doesn't look like that disgusting thing is drag zigzag above your trim paths. So that's gonna look like that. We can make it like bigger. Yeah, so now it's gonna look like that. And then once again, just duplicate it, rotate it 90 degrees, and change the color to purple. So now what I'm gonna do, once again, I'm gonna pre-compose these, call it like spline 2, and control shift D, go to where it ends, and then control shift D. We're gonna put this on the second one. And then unhide this. So right now we have this. Oh, that's a different color. Uh, what color is the intro? Hold on a sec. I'm just going to copy over. That's the wrong thing. Okay, go here. Control C, because that's the color code. And go into spline 2 and control V. Okay. So now we have this. I'm going to duplicate this again. Okay, so I'm going to hide these bottom two, and on this one I'm going to make like multi-burst or whatever, I, I don't know what to call it. So I'm going to drag this a couple keyframes back and then rotate it, so it's going to look like this. Oh, that's the problem about making splines these big. Okay. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Okay, control C. I'm going to put my drop shadow preset onto the spline, so you can just copy what this is. Okay, so I'm going to go back in here. Let's see how it looks on the actual intro. Oh, that's loud. Okay. okay on the intro. I'm trying to do like a lot more splines than I need. Okay, so we can copy this one again and then go back into the splines. Turn all these off. And then I'm going to add zigzag again, but this time it's going to be like actually zigzaggy. So it's going to be like that. We can duplicate this. 90 degrees. Just turn this on. And I'll copy the stroke color.
then we can put this one here. So that's the way we have so far. Uh, we can duplicate this one again and put it on this beat. Uh, worst ones are the curvy one, the curvy one's this one, so we can put that up here. Drag it over here. Yeah, splines, sp well, not splines, burst making is basically just personal preference of what you want it to look like. This is like what most people I think do. Well not do, but like how most people's splines look in my opinion. I usually make them tiny. Now we can put these bursts. Oh, they're already in here. So this is what it looks like. Oh, let it be first. Product or look better. I just, it's just being bad because I have OBS open and I have After Effects open and OBS is recording at the same time because my computer is bad. Ha ha. Um. So yeah. Um. I want to try and do a bunch of shapes. <laughs> So I'm just going to make a bunch of lines at this point. I'm trying to make this my, like, these my best because, um, I want you guys to be good at intros. If this is, like, your first time trying to make an intro or something. What did I just duplicate? Okay. No! Oh my god. Okay. Like that. Okay. So now you can duplicate this. And then you can rotate it 180 so it's gonna look like that. And it's gonna go. I'm trying to be epic guy. Uh, drop shadow preset.
The reason I'm not talking much right now is because I'm trying to focus, but you can just like copy everything I'm doing, so. <laughs> Right here, I'm going to do like a circle thing. That big. Now we have one. I'm going to duplicate it. I'll turn up the size. I think I just turned on caps lock. No, I didn't. Okay. Make the size bigger. Oh. Above the bridge. I'm going to make like a square thing that goes around the text. I'm going to drag the text in here real quick. Just so I can see. Is that good? I think that's good. Yeah. Okay, so I can delete the text from here now. I had trim paths.
Maybe I should actually like turn the stroke for this down. I'm going to duplicate the square thing, and I'm going to put on the next beat, well, actually, like, before the next beat, like, right there, and then I'm going to go here, I'm going to rotate it with the Y rotation 180 degrees, so it goes the other way, I think. Yeah. I'm just going to make regular splines. Okay, so what we want to do with regular splines is just make it 60, and then just like do random things, but you want to make sure it looks curvy. So like that, and then I'll just add trim paths. Make it zero, go like that, and then go like 14. Make it like that long. Boom. I want to duplicate this, rotate it 180 degrees, so then we have some splines. And I'll just put that in here, under everything else. Put a drop shadow preset on here. So now what we have so far is this. so far as this. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to duplicate the song so we still have the markers, but turn this one off and hit control and shift at the same time. Click, right click, pre-compose. Um, now what we're going to do, just go here um, to like lock onto the markers, hold shift while you're dragging on your mouse. And then just hit the asterisk key so it goes up here. And hit K to go back and forth, and J to go. <coughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some motion tile. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do a rotation there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new adjustment layer by hitting Control alt y and then search Motion Tile in here, and drag that onto there, and then search Transform, and then drag that onto here. You want to make sure the Motion Tile is on top and the Transform is on the bottom. You can make the output width like 500 and the height also 500 and turn on mirror edges actually this is rotation so make it 300 and 300 you can like rename this rotation okay so we're going to press E and then go into the transform and do the rotation here and like here And then we're going to F9 these. Ooh. Okay. So I'll show you how to do it with speed graph too. 
Uh, right now it looks like this. Uh, and on speed graph it looks like this. I'm just going to adjust it a little so it's exactly on the beat. Okay. And then I'll do a position right there. So you want to make a new one. Uh, motion tile. Drag that onto there. And then transform again. And put that there. Then you want to make this 500 by 500, and still make sure mirror edges is on. Uh, we can rename this one position, and then hit E, go into transform. Then I want to do position on this one, so I'm going to go like back here, position. And then go over here and do plus 1920 plus 1920. And then we'll have it here. And then F9, go into here. And I prefer to do position with speed graph because, yeah. So, and then you just want to drag this back. And right there. So now it's going to look like this so far without any sinker effects. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what we have so far. Then we can pre-compose these. Now we're going to do sync. So what I like to do with sync, I'll teach you how to do bounce sync. Uh, so get transform, put it on here. Also get motion tile. Put it above. Just make this 200 by 200. Turn on mirror edges. This is how you do bounce sync or uh vixby sync or vibe sync wh whatever you call him um so go into scale i like to make mine 127 and then hit k and go to every single marker go a little bit before here and press that and then go we don't need to go after so hit that press f9 go into the graph editor Make sure you are on value graph. It's very important. Make sure this is off and just hit control and zoom. Because you don't want to go below 100. And then just drag these both down. So it's like that. You won't be able to see it very well because there's no like effects or anything on it. what that looks like. Now I'm going to add um shake. S shake. That's what I'm gonna add. I'm stupid. Okay, S shake. Make a new adjustment layer and drag that. Drag this one under the sink. I'll teach you how to do my shake because yeah. Um so make the frequency two and make the amplitude three. Then hit E and go in here. And you want to do basically the exact same thing. I'm just going to search amplitude. Because that's the only thing. Oh, where did After Effects go? What the heck? <coughs> okay, I don't know what I did just there. But that was a thing that happened. Okay, 
is to wonder what, what you want to do. Let's do the ex basically the exact same thing we just did for sync. Go on here. Where did it go? Y we can keep this one on for shake. But you don't want to make it go like on the sides because that will remove the nice effect that it has. Has uh, you want to make it go a little bit in the middle. So that's going to look like this. I'm not going to show you how to use Twitch because I have a preset for that and I don't know how to recreate it because I made it so long ago. So. what this thing is going to look like right now. Uh, Pre-compose all of this. And then now this is magic bullet looks time. So let me just find the best place to do it. Probably like right there. So now you want to look up looks. Drag that onto there. And press edit. And it's going to be a laggy, stupid head because that's what my computer likes to do. Oh, it's on the other screen. What the heck? Okay. So, what you want to do? Add a pop on this one. I'll just make it 30 on the camera. Add a renoiser. Just turn it up to whatever looks nice. On the lens, add a vignette. Yeah, and then turn up the amount, and also add edge softness, just drag it out like that much. And on this, add um, a diffusion, like two, and then on this one, add, you can add another pop, 30, uh, and then I like to add a spot fill make it like purplish and turn it up so then it adds like a nice glow effect you can see um now what we're going to do we're going to use colorista uh only use this if you know how to use it like correctly cuz it can like change the way the entire intro looks so you don't want to do it too severe so like it looks like that and then colorista is good because it has curves built into it so we're just going to go like that and then down here bring it down so now it looks like this as you can see it looks like that without colorista and this with colorista i don't know if it looks the best this is too much in the blue Okay, I think I messed up. I'm going to do it again. Or I could just add curves. We'll see how that looks. Yeah, I'm just going to use it like this. I don't want to do color stuff. So, as you can see, it looks trash in quarter. But when you put it in full, it looks nice. Okay, so they can go here. And you can do that. Now we're going to do S Glow. So look up S underscore glow. I said underscore instead of underscore because I'm stupid. Make the brightness 0 0.6. Then go into here. Search brightness. Because for some reason on here, if you don't do it this exact way, then it messes up. I don't know why. We could do it like a different way, but... I do it like this, so you can just drag it down. You don't have to drag the other one down, you can just drag this one down. So that's going to look like this. 
Hold on, I'm gonna pre-render it and then I'll show you what it looks like. in quarter because you cannot play it in full or else it will destroy your computer so <laughs> Maybe that'll look better. going to add RSMB, which is, if you didn't know, it's motion blur. I'm going to pre-compose these. It's almost been an hour. Okay, so now I'm going to make black bars. So just make a new solid. Make it, make sure it's black, obviously. And then do CC light white drag that onto the solid, make the intensity 0, make this doors, and make the completion 90, and then du not duplicate, pre-compose these. <coughs> now we're going to do transitions, so make a new solid and make it green. Um, so you can just hide this, and you can turn this off and turn that on. So. <laughs> I'm going to do a circle in, so S, white, circle, and put that on the bottom one, make sure it's circle out, and then just do from there to like there, and then you can go in here, and 
ease the keyframes. I prefer to do a speed graph for these. So now you're going to have this. And I'm going to go over here to the last beat. And we'll do a line for that one. So I swipe a line. And then from here, and then to like right here, maybe. So that's smooth. So now I'm going to preview the entire thing. Wait, wait, wait. First just so rendering is 10 times easier. I'm going to cut this here right before the transition starts. <coughs> Sorry for my cough. And then right after the end transition ends, like the, the frame after it ends, I'm going to cut this. So it's like that. Okay, so now let's, I'm gonna pre-render it and then I'll show you it. Okay, here we go, and I'll play it now. Let's see if it works. Okay, so that was pretty epic. I'm gonna show you how to render now. So, what you do is go to File, Export, Add to Media Encoder, Q. And then Adobe Media Encoder will open, so I'm going to wait until that opens. Okay, so, oh wait, this is the wrong one. Okay, so delete that, and then we're just going to wait until it appears here. By the way, this might not be how yours looks. Uh, this is usually down here, and this is usually up here. I just switch them around because I think it looks nicer. Okay, so now that this is here, you want to make sure that this... Hold on, it's going to load for a second. Okay, so it's going to bring up this menu. You want to make sure the format is H.264 and the preset is match source high bitrate. Uh, you can hit that button if you want, it's not really going to do anything. Then you want to make sure that this is VBR2 pass and the target bitrate is 50. And both of them are 50. And then you can just hit OK. And then I'm going to put this into my renders folder.
Okay, I don't know why it's doing that. But then it's going to be like that. So then you just hit the play button and it's going to render. So, um, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it taught you something about intros. Um, subscribe if you want to see epic intros. Um, bye. Thanks for 600. Bye.